What's up guys, welcome to News Wave. There's a bunch of awesome news today, including a couple things around a dev kit and some mystery games for the Switch. So let's get right into it. So first thing today, United Front Games actually closed down in October. They developed stuff for Sleeping Dogs, and they developed stuff for the Halo Master Chief Collection. And what's interesting is during like a, like a closeout sale where they start basically liquidating their assets and get rid of things, someone actually managed to buy a dev kit from them for a PS4 system. So it's a PS4 dev kit, and you'll see here it looks very different from a normal PS4. Now, dev kits are usually systems that, for example, developers use to program for. They're usually much more powerful. They usually don't look anything like their regular system because they're essentially PCs and usually like boxes, basically, uh, that, that give them the abilities, like I said, to program alongside the game while it's running. And what's interesting about this system is it actually has data on it. Um, the only problem is it's encrypted. What happens is when you have a dev kit for security reasons, every 90 days or so you need to re-up a license just to basically show that it's it's still in use. Uh, and that way if there's any pertinent data, important data uh, that could damage a company in some way, it is just encrypted so you can't get to it. Maybe there's uh, like uh, confidential stuff on there for a company. Maybe there's there could be information about employees. You never know what's in there really. So. What's happened though, is they found that there is 800, 800 gigs, like 800 gigs of encrypted data on here. Now that could be for a couple things. That could be for, let's say an unreleased game like Sleeping Dogs 2, for example, could be on there. And what they're doing right now is they've reached out, the, the owners reached out to Assembler, game, Assembler Games and they're attempting to get it unlocked essentially so that they can see what the data is that's on there. And a lot of people are interested because there could be, as far as we know, a possible prototype of Sleeping Dogs 2 or other games that never came to market. So this is really interesting and we'll kind of keep up to date on it as we as we find out more news because this could actually lead to like a really cool leak of like a prototype game or something. It could be really neat. Next up guys, if you're a fan of the TurboGrafx system, you may be in luck because it looks like Konami has actually filed a patent, a copyright patent for the Turbo Graphics. And what it looks like they're doing, they may actually be re-releasing a Turbo Graphics system. After seeing, I'm sure, the great success of this NES Mini Classic system that is so hard to find now that people are charging obscene amounts of 300 to 400 dollars, maybe more for it. I assume Konami has looked at this and said, yeah, we can do that, that's fine. So they've gone out of their way to put basically a copyright claim in, well, not a claim, but a copyright patent in for the TurboGrafx system. And in the actual identification for it, it is video game software, video game programs, computer, program, computer programs, computer game software, electronic game programs. Down from that, they have to identify different things and they've already said game controllers for consumer video game consoles for use with an external display screen or monitor. What that's gonna tell us is that they are probably developing another Turbo Graphics system and it doesn't look like it's gonna be games built into it. They could, they could go the way of the NES, you know, classic, the Atari Flashback, the new Sega game that's out, like the Firecore, but they could also be releasing a system that takes new cards or cartridges or something like that. But it looks interesting. If you're a Turbo Graphics fan, it might be worth keeping an eye on this because we, we might see a new Turbo Graphics system come out. I'm not really sure what characters would sell the system since it had like Bonk and a couple others. I know Bomberman was on there. There were some popular ones, but the reason that, I mean, the Turbo Graphics struggled so much, it, it didn't have a Sonic, it didn't have a Mario. So I don't know how many people are gonna recognize this system and wanna buy it. Either way, it's pretty awesome to see that we might see the Turbo Graphics actually show up again. And it looks like Nintendo is actually willing to pay you guys money if you're a programmer or hacker to tell them about any issues with the security in the 3DS system. In fact, they're willing to pay anywhere from $100 up to $20,000 to cover any, any issues or any vulnerabilities in the security for the 3DS. So what they've set up is they've actually set up a place you can submit these issues that you find on their website. And what they do is I assume they will review it, see if it's an issue, and if so, they'll determine the amount to pay you. But if you look here, you'll see they actually have different issues they want to try to resolve. For example, they want to do things like uh, system vulnerabilities regarding the 3DS family of systems for uh, escalation on ARM 11 user land, kernel takeover, user land takeover. Basically, they're just trying to stop anyone from being able to hack the system, much like what happened with the PSP or anything like that. It looks like they're just trying to cover their bases right now going forward since the Switch is also gonna be on basically a, an ARM-based 
CPU. They don't want it to kind of, I assume, spill over from the 3DS to the Switch, or maybe they are just trying to cover uh, the 3DS right now. But if you're if you're good at this stuff and you're and you're into hacking, you may be able to make a little bit of money. So I would check that out if I was you. So once again, we have another Switch leak, possible rumor that Smash Bros, which most of us at this point expect to go to the Switch. There's been so many rumors and leaks for it at this point that we would be more shocked if Smash Bros didn't show up on the Switch, a ported version. Looks like, based on what Liam Robertson has reported on, on their Twitter, uh, they're known for things like uh, Unseen 64 and Did You Know Gaming, they were doing that stuff. They've basically said that there are gonna be new characters for the Switch version in particular. I don't know if that means they'll go to the Wii U as well. I assume they kind of maybe want to differentiate or even give us another reason to get it for the Switch. It's technically just buying the same game possibly. Sounds like new characters are going to be entered uh, when you buy it. You can, I assume, expect DLC or just new characters in general come on the disc or cartridge, I should say, cartridge. Uh, but it doesn't say here which characters. They don't, they have not shared that. Either that means they don't know or they're not allowed to say. Uh, it's very vague to say new characters are coming. It says not a ton, but some. So I could see like two or three new characters. Uh, it's hard to say who though. I mean, based on Nintendo and Ubisoft's relationship right now, I would not be shocked if Rayman showed up. That would be really cool. But keep an eye on that guys, because we might see some new characters coming maybe even as soon as January when they start announcing all this stuff. And maybe we see, like like I said, Rayman maybe drop in or something, but we'll see. We'll keep an eye on uh, the Smash Bros. characters coming out for the Switch. And it looks like Ubisoft went ahead and opened registration for the beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands. They did that earlier today, and they released a new trailer titled Mission Briefing, showing off some pretty cool parts of Ghost Recon. I think if you're a fan, you're going to enjoy this game, but you, would want, you do want to go over and register now while you can, because I feel like the beta will fill up quickly, and the beta registration process just opened earlier today. So shoot over there, get signed up, just so you have your chance at least to enter. Uh, I know I'm going to be doing that. I've, I've been a big Ghost Recon fan for a while. It's kind of turned more into Battlefield for me now since that's kind of taken over. I really like Battlefield 1, the newest one, but I'll, I'll definitely be entering this, see if I can get in there, and maybe if I get lucky enough, I can do some gameplay or something, but uh, we'll see going from there. Just go ahead and shoot over there if you're looking forward to Ghost Recon and get signed up. Hey guys, I talked about THQ Nordic. Uh, basically developing games. I just wanted to kind of go back to the story that I reported yesterday, talked about it some. Uh, I want to go ahead and let you guys know that some news came out about which games they were possibly bringing over. The only one that's really been revealed is an IP they bought yesterday, I believe, or at least put in to buy it. It's for, if you guys remember, do you remember Sphinx from back on the PS2? Well, the Sphinx of the Cursed Mummy uh, franchise, they have, have purchased this point, and they've basically claimed that it would be perfect for the Switch. Um, I don't know if, if you have not played Sphinx, it was actually a pretty cool platformer, very similar to like a uh, like a Jack and Daxter or like a Maximo, and it was fun. It was a good game on the PS2. I think they have to add a little bit to it for it to be more current now with the Switch, but that appears to be one of the games they're going to either remaster or rebuild a new game out of that franchise and move over to the Switch. So uh, keep an eye on that too. We'll see if maybe they make an announcement for it uh, going forward. Maybe even January they'll have something for us. I doubt it if they just bought the IP but uh, that might be more something like an E3, but uh, keep an eye out for that too, guys. And the big news of the day, guys, comes back to a Nintendo Switch leak again. It seems like today there were a lot of leaks. I talked about the dock earlier today in one of my videos, uh, but I wanted to tell you guys about an interesting game that From Software has apparently, apparently made working on the Switch uh, optimally, so it works well, and that's Dark Souls 3. Now, there was a tweet that came out from Laura Dale, I'll show it here, and this is basically a picture that she put up, and you can see here that they're talking about essentially that the source says Dark, Soul, Dark Souls 3 is running on the Switch with the level of performance they are happy with, and that could mean a couple things. That could mean like 1080 at 30, that could mean 720 at 30. I, I have to assume they struggle more with the portability factor, because remember the GPU will downclock, will lose some power when on battery. I assume that's what a lot of these companies may struggle with overall, is trying to make a, a parity between you know both, make everything work well together where you can play docked or on the go. Uh, and that's that would be my assumption, is they had a hard time with that part of it. But it looks like Dark Souls 3 runs fine on the Switch now, and it's basically been underway for several months now with a small team with From Software, and they have plans to do a re-release of Dark Souls 3, and it's going to release the same day on all the systems, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and they'll get versions with all the DLC included. 
This is a big deal, guys, because Dark Souls 3 is not an easy game to run on the newer systems, even the PS4 and the Xbox One. Like, the Xbox One runs at 900p and then has to upscale to 1080. It can't run it fully uh, well, is what I'll say, uh, for the Xbox One now. I'm sure the Scorpio will kick the crap out of the game, but that's not what we're talking about right now. PS4 does manage to run it at 1080, no problem. I would not be surprised if the Switch is also able to run at 1080 with no problem, but we'll see. This tells me that there is uh, pretty much across the board, these developers can program and release games for the PS4, the Xbox One, and the Switch. The Switch is right there with those systems, and that tells me that it will be these systems for the rest of the generation, since Microsoft and PlayStation are going to be releasing games for the base PS4 and the base Xbox Ones, just like they will for the Pro and the Scorpio. So the Switch will be around. It is prime for third-party support now. If you can make it for all these systems without any issue, why not? And like I said, the only thing they might struggle with is that portability factor. Moving it from the TV to a portable handheld might bring some struggles. I think if, like I said, the user base is there, which means if enough switches sell, the companies will figure it out. If they have to downscale things to 720 or even 640 and then upscale to 720, if they have to drop some textures. There's ways around that, and I'm sure they can figure it out. Obviously, if Dark Souls 3 is able to run portably, uh, a lot of games will also be able to run portably, no problem. I would love to see something like Grand Theft Auto on the Switch, just to see, I mean, can you imagine Grand Theft Auto on the go, on a handheld? That'd be really cool, just have like Grand Theft Auto 6 or something. But uh, that's the big news for today. It looks like there will be essentially programming across the board. The Switch, to me, with this statement, the Switch is equal to either the Xbox One, the PS4, or both. Maybe it's in the middle of them. Maybe it's equal to the PS4 at this point. Maybe it's above the PS4. We'll know more, like I said, in January. It's just nice to see that From Software is able to take this game from the PS4 and the Xbox One, make it work on the Switch, and we're pretty much good across the board there. So be excited. And that's going to do it for Newswave today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter, at Spawnwave Media, so you can keep up to date with any of the videos I'm making or topics I'm talking about. You can even ask me questions on there that I will then answer on video. So definitely do that. Guys, I will see you next time.